Morning, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. And I'm the pod father of gaming, Stephen Bonacore. Guys, I have the greatest of news. <gasps> I just got an email from somebody, and apparently there is this just went to Congress that the Sunshine Protection Act is before Congress now to adopt daylight savings time permanently. Come on! This is something we can all be on board with. Really? You mean we wouldn't change times? No, like once we change the daylight savings time this coming Sunday, we never go back. What does it matter? I don't care. Does that mean we're out of sync, though, with like other states? The world. No, 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 no. This would be for the country. Florida's already passed the bill, but we can't actually change because you pretty much need... I mean, Arizona doesn't do it, but... For the most part, if, if you got out of sync, that would be very problematic. I disagree with this, but that's fine. Hey, you know. Well, that makes sense because they did poll America, and, and they said that uh, 63% of Americans are in favor and 11% is in favor, is, a, is opposed to it. And I believe those 11% are old, fuddy, <laughs> dead, stupid people, is, if I'm reading this correctly. <laughs> they, the demographic was old and stupid. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate wow. that. It's it's a rough one. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Good Welcome morning. to uh, Board Game Breakfast. Uh, we all get along uh, splendidly. <laughs> no one will ever call names on this show. I'm not. I was reading the news. Anyway, I don't know if this will go through because anything going through, you know, but I figure like this is one thing. This is like a nonpartisan bill, too. So that's always a helpful thing. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. So this show is so tired. political all of a sudden. <laughs> That's true. People are like, ah, oh, I knew the Dice Tower would go politics. <laughs> all righty, folks. Well, we are here to talk about games. It is a, man, so many games all over the place, just always talking about them. <clears throat> We're going to get started with some contributors and be back with the news in just a bit. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. Today we're talking about Crazy Carts. This is from Portal Games. What is it called? And it is insane. So what's happening in this game is there are teams, and every team is comprised of two players. One is controlling half of the cart, the other is controlling the other half of the cart, and each part of the actions go back and forth. I like how you're like acting. <laughs> <laughs> so one person's gonna steer, the other person's gonna go forward, the other person's gonna shoot, the other person's gonna aim, or you know whatever it is. So there's all these different actions that kind of take place alternatingly, and there's no communication between partners. So it's really, really tricky getting to where you need to go. There's not supposed to be communication between partners, but a partner might say, "Hey, just so you know." This is what needs to happen. There's an obstacle right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So this game, um, though I enjoyed it, it was just kind of like, I don't know. It was like wanting wanting to be something that it, it wasn't. Like, it should have been either this huge, crazy, really ridiculous, or it should have been, like, really short. And I just felt like it, it was in this middle ground that I just wasn't uh, happy with. I agree. It plays four to eight players, um, and when you have up to the eight player count, I feel like you're in the party game realm. Yeah. And if you're in the four player realm, you're in the Euro game realm, or, you know, you know a single game, not necessarily a Euro game. But what happened with this is when you have the higher player counts, I would see people either wanting to break off into two tables to have some fun, or to play a party game. Playing eight people who are crowded around the table playing this was really chaotic, kind of long and drug, drug out. Um, yeah, so it's just, like you said, it was in a, in a weird middle ground. It wasn't a party yeah. game, and it wasn't a, a normal uh, tabletop game either. It was just kind of this, this strange racing game. It was interesting, and it was actually kind of fun too at points, but um, it overstayed its welcome for sure. Yeah, well, everybody, if you want to hear more from us, you can find us on Facebook or YouTube. We are Ryan and Bethany at Board Game Reviews. Everybody, this is Ryan and Bethany. Hoping you have a happy, healthy breakfast. Bye, Bye everybody. This is a segment where we take a look at a board game based on IP, and I tell you if the IP and the mechanisms fit together. Today, we're looking at Elf's Snowball Showdown. Let me show you what it looks like. I'll come back and tell you what I think. Snowball Showdown is very easy to play. You get three hits, and you are eliminated from the game. Last person standing is your winner. On your turn, 
you can throw a snowball at somebody. Then they would roll this dice and do what it says. You will let them dodge and throw the snowball at somebody else or allow them to draw some cards. Then when it settles on this person, they can play cards like a buddy card, which allow both of them to get hit, or you can dodge and let somebody else take the damage. But it, you also what you want to do is play defense cards. If you play cards equal to the amount, then nobody takes any damage. If I were to play cards larger than this amount, then they would take damage instead of the original defender. Each time you get a hit, you take a hit card, and last man standing is your winner. So that's Elf's Snowball Showdown. And what you're going to get is the scene from Elf, and this is the third Elf game to come out this Christmas season. This one's based on the snowball fight, if you remember that scene. Where we're just throwing snowballs at each other. Why it has Elf on it makes no sense. There is no reason to have the movie Elf attached to this other than what you're doing. The game is okay. If you have the right cards, guess what? You're going to block it. If you don't have the right cards, you're not. You're going to rule the die, which is completely random. If you're drawing cards, it's going to hit somebody else. There are a lot of rules questions, like the die, is it facing me? Is it facing that way? How do you play the cards? It depends on which way it's going. Eh, the rules were unclear. The game is not very uh, thrilling at all, not very fun. It's really just a card of draw cards and hope you have the right ones. Eh, total miss. IP doesn't really fit with the mechanisms either. The snowball fight that you're having such a small scene in the movie. Nothing about it makes me feel like the movie Elf. Hardly anything here just a cash in all righty well let's take a look here at the news um, we're gonna jump in right away with news of our own here which is the dice tower spring spectacular this is starting on march 22nd going through march 25th four days all kinds of stuff's going to be happening. We'll be playing some games live there. Uh, Mike is going to be doing his top 50 solo games of all time. We'll have various games. We're going to do some new stuff that you haven't seen before. We're going to do games you have seen before, playing them together. And, um, yeah, uh, we'll do a live top 10 list. We'll announce more about that probably next week. And we'll have a schedule up next week so you can see all the stuff that's coming on. So hopefully you'll see, I, I don't know, there's like at least 25, 30 hours of content, hopefully that you will all enjoy. And one of the things that we're going to be playing there was just announced yesterday. Come on, announcing Marvel United X-Men in the biggest, well, non-surprise ever, but oh. <laughs> Marvel United, which should be Landing on our doorsteps the last week of March, as a considering, you know, all the extra stuff for it. Right. So they're going into the X-Men, and we are playing that live during the Spring Spectacular. And um, can't tell you more about, there's something different about it, but we can't talk about what that's going to be. So you'll have to wait till then to see what it is exactly. But you can see that there's Wolverine, Storm, Cyclops, um juggernaut and magneto are in the game we'll be playing and we know that professor x is going to be in there and it's sadly i don't know who else will be in there because i don't think there's enough x-men for them to fill six thousand different stretch goals number one i did not receive the memo about the uh, spring spectacular number two i better be invited to the spring spectacular number three i'm buying this just to get that wolverine mini because that is cool i love me some wolverine i agree and appreciate your number three <laughs> All right. Um, so that's oh, that's. Uh, I think that's Kickstarter. I'm gonna go on. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this will do better than the first one. Wow. I don't know. X Men are more popular than the Avengers, I think. But people already know what the game's like, uh, and that might they might lose some people that way. I don't know. I'm curious. I am curious, too. It also depends on how, I mean, it, it works out really well. If that stuff is landing in your box, you open it up, you're like, look at all this cool miniature stuff. Oh, it's online again? I think that might work. Who knows? Yeah, if they get the timing just right on this, absolutely. It'll it'll drive people with that frenzy of opening new things to go get more, yeah. And yes, folks were asking, this was the box I did not show in the unboxing. All right, there's not a lot of other news here, uh, but Bonnaker wants to say something else about Come On. Oh, yeah, if you don't mind. Um, so, you know, we talked 
very recently about um, you, Tom Yuen, and you looked at some of their financials. I believe that what you saw was the 2019, the finally audited 2019. The 2020, I do not believe, are out yet, but they should be soon. But the bigger news in the whole thing is that uh, Simon's stock has resumed trading on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Um, so you can own a piece of a, a major publishing company. I am not recommending you do it. I'm neither, neither not saying you shouldn't do it, but just letting you know that you can now go trade it. I spent ten thousand dollars on the stock on advice of, of my advisor, Mr. Bonacore. No, 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 no. I'm not a financial advisor, and if I was, I am not your financial advisor. Please take note of that. Thank you. As we know. I never listen to anything you say about my. <laughs> That's All right, right. Ah, right there. We know that that couldn't be true. <laughs> All righty, let's go back to games here. Sub Astral. Um, this is from Renegade Games, a two to five minute game from Riddle and Pinchback. Two uh, to five get... players, okay? It's not two to five minutes. It's a five 15 players, to 30 right. minutes. <laughs> well, they just, what was they? They did a short space themed game just in 2020. Uh, what was the name of that one? Um, you talking about Renegade or the designers? Both. It was these two designers with Renegade. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Was it that at Stellar game? or I think that's what it was called. Stellar, yeah. It's in the notes here, but I don't recall that game. I don't think I've ever seen it. It was it was okay, I thought. But some people like it. So I, yeah. <clears throat> I'm kind of okay with this. I think we might be... It does seem like we tend to pick themes and run those themes into the ground. So space, that's a really cool theme. But I'm going to suspect that the theming here doesn't really matter at all. But it might be great. And Beth Sobel does great art. Yes. You know, what's funny, though. This is Beth Sobel artwork. I see that now. And you just mentioned it. This this cover, except for the uh, the 3D sort of, you know, architecture there, really looks like the reprint of Fjords. Have you seen the reprint of Fjords? They've put the cover no. out there. It's coming to Kickstarter soon. The two covers side by side have almost the same uh, landscape, which is strange to me. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, I think it's her for both. I wonder if she painted one really long painting that has this <laughs> landscape, and then was like, uh, "You get this piece, and you get this piece." Oh, that's an interesting thing. I, I wonder if funny. people. I have read that that's how some things are done, like for Magic: The Gathering. Yeah, right. Well, a really big picture, then they zoom in to get different cards. Yeah, maybe, man. Magic the Gathering it's a lot card, of hard work. So. Magic the Gathering card pieces don't need to be very big, as you can imagine. No, I, but I think that's an interesting concept to, to do art like that, to draw one big picture, then zoom in to get different parts. I don't think it's ever been done for different games, but... Yeah. All right, the next one, Unmatched which is a very popular game. Z likes it a lot. I do. They had a design contest, and the winners have been announced. So they're going to actually make these these folks uh, these things into actual decks. So we have the Genie of the Lamp, Harry Houdini, Rosie the Riveter, and William Shakespeare. And I believe the first set coming out is going to be uh, Harry Houdini versus the Genie of the Lamp, which I think is great. Theming anyway. <laughs> this is fantastic. I love hearing their um you know that I didn't even hear about this design contest, but that's fantastic. They're going ahead with publishing these. That's excellent. Yeah, actually, not only that, they said that they would publish the top four winners. They said they got so many good entries that they will eventually be doing eight more from this contest. Oh, that's really cool. Wow. Very yeah, nice. I have never played this, um, so I really have to, since you're giving it such good big reviews and since they're they're going in deeply supporting it, I have definitely got to get my hands on some of these decks. Well, I, I, I forget this this was really high in Z's top one hundred. It nice. was somewhere in the in the twenties, maybe. Yeah. It's a it's a fun game. Bonacore, I think you would like it. How fast is the game? How quickly Oh, half an hour? I mean it's a oh, quick excellent. Two players? Yeah, it's a, did you ever play Star Wars Epic Duels? Oh yeah, uh, uh, the the one with the the miniatures. Yeah, this is a re re implementation of that game. Yeah, Rob, that no kid. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that was very good. Cool. 
Okay, so Pandasaurus has gotten the rights, and it will be reprinting The Loop and Wild Space in English. The Loop, Mike did a little review of that here on our channel, of the solo version of it. And Wild Space, I don't know if we got that one, or did you do that one, Z? Yeah, I reviewed that, Tom. Um, and I got a positive review. I think I gave it an 8 out of 10. I quite like it. It's a very clever card game. Some nice combos in there. I'm very happy about this. And The Loop, I saw you guys played that live as well, if I'm not mistaken. I think maybe we did. I, it's, I'm having a hard time remember. I know yeah. we played it. It's definitely it's a game in which you go back in time, sort of. You're like making a loop where you can do things multiple times. You get extra actions on your turn, essentially, yeah. uh, to stop an evil genius. I like the artwork of it a lot. It has that definite crazy scientist vibe that you're trying to stop. Absolutely. These are great. These are great pickups for Pandasaurs. I'm very happy to see these two get republished. All right, and possibly the best named game in all existence. <laughs> <It's> terrible. <laughs> Is making a game called go Grease, Grease Lightning. Lightning. Go Grease Lightning. Grease Lightning. Go Grease Lightning. Fuel inject the cup uh, and the uh, chrome barrel cobble. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the best name I've ever seen. Awesome. Do you? Here's the problem. This game Terrible. is going to be hampered by that name. For sure. I, it no, looks everyone's like going to sing it. They're going to put it on a table. Everyone's going to start singing Grease, Greased Lightning. I, I, love I it. think some people will not buy the game based on the name. I don't agree. This is gonna. This is great. I loved. I when I saw this, I was like, "This is just brilliant." So you really like this name? Yeah, I do. No, I think it's funny. I think it's funny, and therefore it's, it's gonna funny. get noticed. It's a joke in a pitch meeting. If someone said, "Let's call it Grease Lightning," I be everyone would laugh. We'd all laugh. We'd be like, "All right, I like now." What's really the name? Is it about grease? Yeah. And is there lightning in the game? Great There's name. no lightning. No, I see I lightning on the so. box right there. The lightning is hitting that ship. I guarantee. <clears throat> it's a racing mechanism. game. They, they were just being funny because, you know, you're trying to go quickly with your Greek ship. I mean, come on. It has nothing to do. If if your game, because of your dumb pun title, makes me think of like a 60s musical and it has nothing to do with that, you failed in marketing. I, I agree because we'll be talking about the game. I'll say I played Grease Lightning the other day and someone's going to think about Grease, the musical. Yeah. And then I'll explain, no, it's actually Grease Lightning. And then somebody will laugh, but not many people. Oh, that's a cease and desist right there from WizKids. Don't pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> I give kudos to WizKids, which means my buddy Zed and Katri. I love her. She's wonderful. This is a great I, no I didn't hear most said, of that, but I'm glad but, I didn't. So. <laughs> I feel the same thing. I don't know what he said, but who cares? <laughs> oh, that's so nice. I said. You broke up a little bit there. Um, say, say what you said again. Kudos to WizKids, which means my buddy Zev, our buddy Zev, uh, who who is the board game guy there, and Kathleen Mercury, who is a wonderful, wonderful person and great designer. This is a great idea. All right. All righty. Again, I. I think the game might be fine. I'm just saying the name. The game looks good. All right. I'm, then we have. I'm buying it now. I'm going out right now and getting this game because I love the name so much. Pirates. <laughs> this is from a, a, a little small game from Egel Spiel. Um, I'm not sure I'm sold on the this name, Pirates, is that problem where I'll say, they'll say, what was the name of that game again? And, and no one's going to spell it correctly, but it might. I don't know. It looks okay. I thought there was a game already called this back in the day. Uh, now I gotta look this up. Now I don't Isn't know. Is there a game called Pie Rats? Oh, you're right. See, no, there's no game that's called that. But I just realized it's it is Pie Rats with the Z there. I just. Oh no just, no! The one I'm thinking of. Wrong. The one I'm thinking of was a game called Sewer Pirates. And it was Pie Rats, but it had an S. At least they didn't put a Z in there. Nobody needs a Z, okay? <laughs> oh, I buddy. this is like the the news of tortured puns, right? Grease lightning, pie, pie rats. What's oh. a rat game about rats? Hey, but tell I, you, but, I think but, it's cute. but we're not done yet. <laughs> All right, let's move to Small World: The Lost Tribes Crusade. All right. Solitaire rules for Small World. You can get these online and. Download it and play with um, the Lost Tribe. They're kind of like zombie tokens because they just keep coming back to the board. 
this is something that I don't have any interest in because I I love Small World, but it doesn't feel like a game I want to play solitaire. But I, maybe a lot of people do. What do you think, Z? Um, I'm kind of over Small World at this point. Largely, this is a little too late to the party. I don't know. To me, like if this was ever going to be a thing, it should have been a thing six years ago. But or, or at the beginning of the pandemic, right? You see what I'm saying? Then they could have been like, hey, you're stuck at home alone. Here you go. It's, so by either calculation, it's like six <laughs> years late or a year late. That's what <laughs> I think. Six months late. Oh, well, or six months late. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, Tom. You. This is more of a question for uh, maybe Mike Delisio, who's a big solitaire player. I don't. Uh, I'm not excited about it. But then again, I don't think anything Small World announced any announcement that Small World related would particularly be exciting now. So you know, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. I think Small World is still a fairly large seller, uh, yeah. and and you know, you you can't have enough content that will bring it down to so I mean you can't have enough content out there for solo these days so putting it out as a mini expansion so it's going to be cheap I'm sure good idea on their part looks very pretty I'd like to see what it's going to do be interesting I do like this part where you can use these rules it says in a two player game that's cool too to simulate AI attacking both of you oh that sounds really cool. good I'm happy to do that if it's a two player game in which I have to fight you and this crazy tribe that's attacking willy-nilly, both of us, that that sounds good to me. I, I would try that way. Agree. Oh, no. The ultimate in uh, puns. Where'd Tom go? I don't think it's the ultimate in puns here. This is this is um, Blockness. Oh, awesome. oh, no. This is like, this is like Blue Orange Games... And Iggle Games and WizKids got together and said, who could make the most tortured pun game? And they all did it. This might have to win. This is a good one, man. <laughs> this is blockness. It's fine. I, I mean, this game actually looks really interesting to me. I like the yeah. idea of the 3D um, figures. Yep. The game looks yep. fun. Yep. Uh, but yes, this is definitely the day for puns. Yeah, it looks it looks really pretty, really interesting. Uh, I don't where I don't know where the ages are in the game. Is it go down to like, I guess it's like eight to adult, if not even lower. Um, fun family game. It looks like. It looks pretty. That's for sure. It makes me think of an old uh, Sid Saxon game or something, but with a cute theme, you know. Yeah. Alrighty, and then finally, finally here we have Zoom game, Zoom Barcelona. And Zoom, I'm sorry, Zoom in Barcelona and Zoom in Kobe. I, I made that exact mistake when I first read this because I was like, is Zoom sponsoring games now? Because like that would be so appropriate right now. But Zoom in as in like taking photos, I guess, right? That's the kind of thing I've never played. I, these are follow-ups to other ones or no? These are brand new. Well, I don't know. Well, no, no. I, okay. So there was already a... Well, no, Zoom no, in Barcelona both, came out in 2019. It was oh, from a, it. a company called Kukafera Games. And I okay. feel like it came through the Dice Tower at some point. It looks like a game that we might have seen. Hmm? But I don't. I didn't play it. Me neither. I don't recall this. Someone on the Dice Tower getting, must have played it. These are getting picked up by another publisher or no? But yeah, Blue Orange is now. Oh, Brian, Brian, Brian Drake played it, okay. and he he gave the seal of approval, seven point five. So, all right. Okay, so Blue Orange is picking up both of these. Okay, nice. Well, that's I like the concept of it. It sounds like a lot of fun. Alrighty, folks. Well, that's all the news we got for you today. I'm sure we'll have more next week. We're gonna go on to some contributors and be back for a game show. Chris. Hi, I'm Jordan. Well, Jordan plays Blue. Um. Yeah, I haven't done a segment in a while, and uh, I got some personal stuff that was going on, and, you know, making videos about board games isn't quite as important as some things in life, apparently, so took some time off, but I want to come back, and I want to make some more videos, and I want to do some videos about board games this time, so over the last year I did those definition videos, and those are fun, but I'm kind of bored with those, so 
I want to talk about board games. Uh, if you guys don't know me, I, I'm married. I have three little kids at my house. I have uh, a dog and a cat and I work full time at a, a job where I do things that are important and stuff. And I work and I'll come home and, you know, we have to make dinner and then we feed the kids and maybe we feed ourselves and then, you know, we'd entertain our children or parent, I guess you could say. Um, and then we put a kid to sleep and then we put the other kids to sleep and, you know, read a story and get convince them to brush their teeth and convince them to put their pajamas on. And then we sit with them until they fall asleep. And then maybe we want to play a game and that would be really nice, but we don't play like, we don't play a lot of really heavy games. You know, we play pretty light games. We play maybe medium weight games, but none of the games we play on a weeknight take longer than an hour. You know, these are probably filler games to some of you real gamers out there. Um, but these are really the only games that my, my wife and I get to play because we really like to play games, but our lives are really busy and, but we still like to play games and this is what gets played. So I'm gonna call these weeknight games. And these are games that play quickly and don't have a ton of rules and but are still a lot of fun to play and so let's talk about weeknight games in the coming weeks and i'll 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 show you some good ones how about that all right all right i'm jordan thanks howdy folks welcome to buy the numbers my name is hunter thomason from the family showdown on this episode of By the Numbers, I'm continuing my Through the Years series, where I look at the best game on Board Game Geek by year. We started with 1970, this time 2008. Take a look at the top five from 2008. We see the number one game is La La La, La... The Harbor, coming in at number 47. That's a pretty impressive top five. In fact, this is the first top five where I owned every single game. Amazing. Now, as a heavy economic strategic game from Uwe Rosenberg, has aspects of city building, worker placement, and of course, feed your people. The Hob is also my favorite Uwe Rosenberg game of all the games I've played of his, including, including Bonanza, if you can see it up here in the corner. La Hav is my favorite. Taking a look at the ratings, over 26,000 of them. We see mostly 8s and lots of 7s and 9s and 10s for an overall rating of 7.9. Taking a look at the weight, it comes at a 3.74, which seems about right for a heavy economic simulation game, one of Uwe's heavier games. So if you're looking for a game where you have to feed your people, but this time with boats. La Havre. La Havre. I can't pronounce it, for one thing. <laughs> Why, why isn't this called just the harbor? No, the city is called... Shut up, Z. We're not trolling again here. <laughs> you almost got me it's in there. No! La Havre, right? I can see your email La coming. La Havre. La Havre. La Havre. Might be the game for you. See you next time. Hi there again, all you Marble Racing fans. Well, we've completed the track for the Dice Tower's own hit Marble Racing show, Shoots and Marbles. And by the time you're watching this, it's already packed up and making its long trip from Toronto down to the Dice Tower headquarters in Florida. But while we wait for that to arrive, let me take you through some of the sections that I've developed since I talked to you last. First, we have this new section that features modular walls and bells that are attached with little magnets on the bottom. This allows for a variety of obstacle layouts. decide to decorate all the wall pieces with board game box art. So next time you're watching the show, see if you can identify all the games that are featured. The next section is for those marbles with good balance. The racers are guided onto this narrow beam, and the earlier they fall off, the more they are slowed down by these obstacles on the sides. A marble that makes it all the way to the end without falling off can make up some good time on the competition. I also made it so you can control the beam angle with a knob underneath the board, so the difficulty can be adjusted. I also completed the turn sections for the track as shown here. The marble racers are directed over to one side, so they drop down at the top of the next section. 
These turns also feature a lovely spectator viewing area for some lucky VIPs. Now there's one last section and I'm very excited about it, but you'll have to tune in to shoot some marbles to see it for yourself. I'm David from the track development team. Thanks for watching. Hey! Hello, everybody! Welcome back to 10 for 10. Fellows, today you are going to be competing over a category on Board Game Geek. I looked up a specific kind of game, and then I grabbed the top 10 in that category and another 10 in that category. The category? Nautical games. Now, what do I mean by nautical? Well, let's take a look. If there's a board picture game of geek. water in the game in any way, it's a nautical game, right? Kind of, sort of, maybe, yeah. Their description is, nautical games involve sailors, ships, and or maritime navigation as a major component of the theme or gameplay. Uh, most nautical games, that, but again, take that most with a grain of salt, require players to effectively control ships as an objective. That's not always a requirement, though, by any means. Okay. So we would Block Ness be a nautical game? I just Yes, it would be. In this <gasps> category, it would be a nautical game. Okay, I'm trying to give you... So you understand kind of like the parameters that you're looking at here. Okay. Uh, All right, so I am going to... I have my uh, game... Random game generator here. Like I said, in here I put 20 games. 10 are in the top 10. If they're ranked by BGG ranking, you know, including only nautical games. And then there are another 10. I'm going to give you a title. You're each going to simultaneously vote whether, yes, you think it is in the top 10, or no, it's not in the top 10. You'll get a point if you're right. And then we will assign the game to someone if it is in the top 10. We'll go from there if and when that happens, okay? So are you guys ready? Yeah. Ready. Here we go. The first one that comes up on my screen Pirates Cove. Pirates Cove. If you think it is in the top 10 on BGG or not, make your selection now. You ready? Show me. Uh oh. Interesting. Bonacore says yes. Tom says no. I think it's a fantastic game. I like it a lot, but it's so old, I just don't think it'd be in the top 10. If it is, I'm going to have to change my worldview on what games are in or out. Nautical. Mm, nautical. It is not in the top 10. Tom, you get a point. And it is the 61st game in the nautical <laughs> ranking of games. All right. Uh, so I was very wrong. Is you what were you're very, just... very wrong. Yes. Got That's it. Okay. All right. Now but I know again, where we're going with this. Just adjust... He's still struggling with the lack of daylight savings time sleep. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm, I'm sleep deprived here. You know. You have to adjust to Tom's game's worldview. So. Here we go. Next up, we've got Deep Sea Adventure. Deep Sea Adventure. I am ready. All right. All right. Show me. All right. You are both incorrect on that one. It is number 32, guys. Number 32. I just thought perhaps the... The very, very crazy, happy uh, people who love that game would have pushed it higher. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Next up, we've got Underwater Cities. Underwater Cities. I'm ready. Ready? Show me. Too new, maybe. All right, well, Tom is correct. It oh, come is, on! It is in the top ten. That means Tom right now has two points. Steven, you have none, which means you are trailing on this race to 15 points, yeah. by the way. So it's your choice who gets 
underwater cities. And I'll remind you of the scoring right now. The number one game is worth six points. Five for the second, four, the next one, three, and two for the fifth place. And then six through ten are just one point apiece. Another point. And we're each going to end up with five of these games. You will not. If you give it to, you can give this to Tom if you want to, because the trick is whoever's trailing in points gets to decide where games go as they come up in the top 10. You have to just cross 15 first. Oh, right, right. Give it to Tom. You want to give it to Tom? I will give it to Tom. I think it might be number one. Oh, 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 that's ugly if that's the case. See, it's this card. I didn't write anything on it, but it is this card here. What do you think it might be? And this is the its place in the in the top ten is what's on the back of this card. I'm saying Tom's one. saying he thinks it might be number one. What do you think, Steven? Six. <laughs> oh, it's the number two game. It's not right. my Oh, Tom, it's not my two day. entry. Worth five points, takes him to seven. And you have love. Seven love. That's never a score. But we anyway. talk about something I know a lot about. I don't know. Something like, I don't know. Beer, business. You don't know about you know. nautical things? Apparently. Not maritime, baby. Apparently. I'm not a boatsman here. Yo. I don't think I don't think that being a boatsman matters in this sort of thing. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> boatsman. Here we go. Next up. Aquasphere. Aquasphere. So again, you're trying to get to 15. You can do this just by guessing correctly, one at a timing it, or by, you know, when one comes up, taking it or giving it to the other person. Stefan Feld. Aquasphere. Let's see it. Wow. You're trying to trick, you're tr- definitely trying to trick Steven, Tom. Oh, That's- you mean when I said the Stefan Feld thing? Yeah, you were like, I knew it was Feld. <laughs> That's so mean, man. (laughs) Okay, guys, it is not in the top 10. That means another point for Tom. He's at eight. This is number 24, though. It's a little closer, Stephen. You had some right to think it might be in there. Maybe. Could be. Next up. Um, Tom is really enjoying this. Raiders of the North Sea. Raiders of the North Sea. All right, let's see. What do you think? You still thinking? Not too popular. (laughs) Yes? Yeah, we both got yes. You are both correct. Yeah, I know. So one point that for was... Steven, one point for Tom. Tom's at nine, Steven's at one. Would you like to take it or give it to him, Steven? I will take it. You will take it. You should probably be, like, taking some for a while, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I agree. Now, this is worth two points. It's the number five entry, okay? Huh, that's lower than I thought it would have been. I thought that was three, maybe yeah. even one. Yeah. So there you go, Stephen. You are back up to three points. There you go. You're gonna. You're hopefully gonna catch up and even surpass Tom. I really, really doubt it. If I was a better man, it's, I would it's bet possible though. You. It's really possible he could beat me here with a few big numbers. Yeah, that's it right. Is that's, that's, that's the number the two is the off the system. table. The number two is off the table. It's a five point swing. You know. So the we'll number see. one and three though, that's ten points. It is. Yeah, it baby. is. He could do it. Here we yeah. go. Next up. Cyclades. Cyclades. Or if you're not on the internet a lot, Cyclades. Cyc- <laughs> Nobody knows how to pronounce this. Let me know when you guys right, are ready. I'm ready. Steven, I'm ready. let's yeah, see. Ready. Ooh. Interesting. Well, once again, I'm sorry, but Tom is right. It is in the top 10, bringing him Amazing. to 10. Steven, would you like to keep this or give it to him? Great, great game. Um, Why would you? I got to take, take it. it. I have to ask <laughs> him. It. it would be really take. dumb to give take. it to you, but I have to ask him. Take, 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 take. Okay, it's the number nine, oh. which means you get a point. You're now yeah. at four, Steven, to his 10. If he gets five more right just from guessing, you're done. Get on the ball, baby. Here we go. Next up. Captain Sonar. Ooh. Captain Sonar. Ooh. 
You guys ready? Yeah. Let's see it. Very nice. You are both correct. Steven, you have five. Tom's got 11. Steven, would you like to keep it or give it to him? Take take it. Take it. Take take it. Take it. I'm going to say this one is seven. What? (laughs) You look. You sigh. I flashed it. No, I didn't see it. I was just guessing because it's. I love this game a lot, but I didn't think it'd be in the top ones. This is one of the, this is the only game so far that me and Mr. Bonacore have played together. Oh, of man. these games. Yeah. Of these games, yeah. yes. All Not right. of any it's, game it's, 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 You you are really you are really good at this game. I'm I'm really bad at but I don't you know I You're bad at anything much. nautical of noticing. <laughs> Including playing the game. Come on. Stop that. All right, you are up to six points. The only boat I've ever been on is a cruise ship, so I don't think I'm going to be saying <laughs> anything here. Don't they have, like, my my little cruise or something like that in this list? I know about that game. <laughs> my little cruise. What? The... <laughs> I don't My oh, little about cruise. About that one, yeah. Anyway, Steven, you got six points. Tom's got 11. Here we go. Rum and Bones, second tide. This is the second edition of Rum and Bones. I really right. like this game. Let's see it. You are both correct, fellas. This is number 54 in the uh, yeah, rank. It's a good, it's a good game, but it did not get a lot of love. The sec- Which is weird, because the first edition seemed to get more love, and the second edition was clearly superior. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think it. people wrote it off after the first one, maybe, Tom, and never came back for what they thought would be just was more content as opposed right. to a reworking. Anyway, we've got Steven with seven. Tom has 12. Very close to the uh, end uh, end goal here. Next up, Fleet. Fleet. Not the now, dice game, just Fleet. Okay, as I say, there's Fleet and Fleets. No, no, this is singular. It is the one that had a dice game based off of it, though. Got it. I'm ready. Let's see it. That is correct, gentlemen. This is number 46, 46 of the ranked uh, oh. nautical games. Steven, you have eight. Tom, 13. Keep giving Not us nosy. Good. Keep giving yeah, us Yeah, this nose. is, now it's a roll yeah. of the die to see if you <laughs> get a big one. Hey, you know. The nose are helping Next you up. a lot. Next up, we've got Carcassonne, South Seas. Carcassonne, South Seas. The fishiest of all Carcassons. <laughs> I'm ready. Let's see. Yeah. It. No way. That is correct. Game number forty-eight. Steven, I... you have nine points. Steven, nine. Tom and has Tom 14. has. No, no. Listen, fourteen. Oh. If we both guess this one correctly, and it is the number one, and you take it, you win. There is a tie. Okay, it will go to whoever has the worst ranked one out of the top ten. That's how the tiebreaker works. That would be you right now because you have the number nine entry. Tom only has one one thing. He has got the number two. So the rest of them, he's just guessed correctly. He's killing it with the guessing part of this game. Today. Killing it. Killing it. Killing it. He's a nautical cat. You've heard that song, Nautical Cat? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's it's <laughs> like Grease Lightning. Nautical it's Cats. Song. Oh, they are on boats. So nautical cats. <laughs> All right. Here we go, guys. (laughs) Next up, Endeavor, Age of Sail. Endeavor, Age of Sail. Ready. Ready. Let's go. Ready. Yes, taking it. Number one answer. Come on, it is. It is. You're both correct. Tom is now at 15, and you are taking it. If it's the number one answer, that's another six points. Could that be, means very you win with 16. Yes, baby. It's not the number one answer. It's the number oh. six. Number six answer. <laughs> that would have blown my mind point. had it been the number one. Here's the thing, though. I can't think of what the number one answer is. Um, All right, here we go. I'm going to reset the list here because I, I don't think it matters anymore. And we're going to look at the entries, go, guys. You ready? Go bottom up. Or Bottom up. Maybe. Well, I'm not going to worry about the psych outs, okay? There yeah, this is 10 through 1. Outs. 10, yeah. I'll just give you the list. So number ten is Imperial. Okay. I guess. Number nine, Cyclades. You got number eight, Goa. Okay. Yeah. Very popular okay. back in the day. Very Still big. Still pretty high, you know. Uh, yeah. Captain Sonar, number seven. 
Number six, Endeavor Age of Sail. Number five, you guys got Raiders of the North Sea. Number four is Keyflower. Okay. Number okay. three, Le Havre. Oh, um, God, there's a, there's a lot of boats in that one. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Then number two came up, Underwater Cities. And number right. one is Concordia. Oh, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So there you go, yeah. Tom. That's a clear weird, winner today. A weird themed list, though. I, I mean, I get the theming Probably. of it, but I would put very few of those games on. If I was making a top 10, many of those games wouldn't make that list. Well, you won, so you don't get to complain <laughs> about it. Would you like to complain <laughs> about anything, Stephen? I would like to complain that uh, I'm not a boatsman, therefore I was at a disadvantage. <laughs> okay, well, next game, it'll be all about wines and various other alcoholic beverages. Okay? <laughs> Sounds good. I think that's I can That's like his only thing he has. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, that's it for us. We got more contributors, don't we? Let's check them out. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm Lizzie. And we are To Play. Or Not. No, to Play. A show about board games for two players. Whose tastes may differ. <laughs> they, <laughs> and they, they do, do. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> Today we've been taking a look at My City, which is a legacy game. It's been very exciting. Yeah. It's for two to four players. We've been playing it as a two. Um, check out our review on our channel. Um, whilst we were playing the game, we came up with a little tip for you guys that we'd love to share with you. Yeah, we would. Um, so when you play most legacy games, I don't think we're spoiling too much to say that you change the board mm. um, as you go along. Uh, and so we were thinking when we bought the game, you'll change the board and then that's the game done. And There's eight, yeah, eight chapters, yeah. 24 episodes. Once you're done, you're done. There is a, an eternal game, they call eternal it, on the, on the other side of the board, which doesn't yeah, change. So good. you can play that. But... We were quite surprised when we were playing this game. We were playing, there's two boards. Uh, we were playing wolf. wolf and bear boards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and when we finished playing those and we sort of, oh, they were starting to change the board. Mm. Ooh. Oh, this is when it came to us. <laughs> because the game's designed for two to four players, there are two other boards. Um, uh, stag board stag and, and eagle. eagle board. Yeah, stag and eagle boards, which we'd not touched because we're playing as a two player game. Ooh. So when we finished the campaign, we can play all over again. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so that was our top tip, really. If you're thinking about buying this game, you get to buy it twice, technically, if you're playing <laughs> yeah. it as a two-player game. So top tip, fill your boots. Yeah. <laughs> Check out our channel review, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. See you later. Bye. Hey everybody, I'm Spencer Williams from the Lighten Up Initiative and I create board game media with a lighter touch. If you're like me, I feel sorry for you. Also, the idea of a game is what determines if you want to learn more about it. In this segment called, What's the Point? I'll describe the point of a game so you can decide if it's something you should look into. Pots are the unsung heroes of life. There are many kinds of pots, all of which prove to be invaluable every day. Let's see, you've got nonstick, clay, chamber, misses. Today I want to tell you about a game that features another kind of pot, the invulnerable kind. By now, you've probably guessed that the game I'm talking about is Quacks of Quedlinburg. The game has won dozens of awards, which I would argue was only made possible by the pots. You see, in the game, players are quack doctors competing to be the best at pulling yucky things out of a bag. Players will place bits of mandrake, crow's skull, ghost breath, and other all-natural ingredients inside their pot to mix them together into one tasty concoction. The more ingredients they're able to fit into the pot, the more points they'll get. Now, for some reason, you've chosen to place exploding cherries into your bag along with other non-incendiary ingredients. Tossing a few cherry bombs into your pot isn't a problem. In fact, cherry bomb potions are very popular. But if you decide to keep pulling ingredients out of your bag and you draw too many cherry bombs, boom, all your hard work is ruined. But you know what's not ruined? Your pot. There's not a scratch on it after the explosions. In the game, it doesn't matter how many times a concoction explodes inside a pot, you'll never have to buy a new one. Which is a good thing, because the game lasts for nine rounds. After many agonizing will-you-won't-you-draw decisions, the game is over and whoever has the most points wins the game. But I say the true winners are the ones who held it all together, the pots. And that's the point of Quacks of Quedlinburg. Speaking of pots and holding it together, life can be hard. But board games are fun, so don't take the board game hobby too seriously. Just lighten up. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. Daniel Kramer sent us a super chat that says he really loves Bonacore and the Live Board Game Breakfast. Great addition. Did you, did, 
Can you repeat that? I didn't. It 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 broke up on my internet. I got a bad internet connection here. Can you well, that's that? true. If you had followed daylight savings time, wouldn't have that problem. Alrighty, folks. Thanks so much for watching, folks. There is not any more live stuff for the rest of today, but there are videos going up. I'm doing my top. 10 action point games and other reviews. So keep an eye out for all that stuff. We have many videos and we'll be back with this show in a week. Thank you Z for the game show. Thank you, Mr. Bonico for showing up with your expertise and thank you all for watching and all our contributors for doing a fantastic job as always. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Stephen Bonacore. And you've been watching Board Game Breakfast. <laughs>